by far my most favourite feature on my Garmin Edge 1040 head unit is Climb Pro. But it had one huge limitation, that being you could only benefit from this great feature if you're following a specific route loaded into your unit. One of the most called for enhancements from Garmin Edge users is to be able to get the benefits of Climb Pro on a free ride with no predefined route. And that's exactly what they've now given us, with a bit more thrown in too with the Climb Explore widget. So this video will take you through what's new, but first, for those not yet using Climb Pro, here's a clip from my full Edge 1040 solar review, which I'll link at the end, explaining this fantastic tool. It was available on previous Edge units, but Garmin have utilized the more advanced and faster processing of the 1040 to make it a more colorful and graphic experience. You can see quite a dramatic difference when we look at the climbs on the Cumbrian Cracker ride I did in November. On a 1030, the list of climbs on the route looks like this, and you click on an individual climb to see the profile. On the 1040, the list looks like this, so there's no need to look further to see the profile. This is what you see on the climb with the 1030. With the 1040, the variations in gradient are more apparent and clearly mapped out on this colorful display. The key information is also shown in a larger font so it's easier to read. And recent firmware updates have added a box above your position marker showing the current gradient, which frees up a data field at the bottom for something else, as I had the gradient showing in that box below. There are two rules that need to be met in order for a hill to show up as a climb. It needs to be a minimum of 500 meters of length and must have an average gradient of at least 3%. The categorization is then done by multiplying the average gradient by the distance in meters. It's quite possible then, as I found out in Yorkshire recently, to go up plenty of steep hills and them not to show up as climbs on your head unit. They were typically dozens of very short 10 to 12 percent ramps in Yorkshire which didn't fit the minimum distance but cumulatively there were still strengths happening. The benefit of Climb Pro knowing the route that you intend to take is that you get the information at the top showing in this example that you're on Climb 8 of 19 for that ride and the next one is nine miles away. Garmin refer to this as tethered Climb Pro. It's fixed to the predefined route and other hills and climbs around you will be ignored. But not everyone rides with a loaded course and being able to use Climb Pro in a free ride has been the huge missing link until now. To best understand how free ride Climb Pro will work, it's worth looking at the new Climb Explore widget first. Like all widgets on these units, you swipe down from the top of the screen and you'll see a list of all the climbs relative to where you are at the time. The three dotted lines at the top reveal a settings menu where you can decide on your terrain type. For me, that'll be paved and also alter the search radius. And then you can decide whether you want all climbs to be shown or just the categories you wish to limit it to. The categories are the same as used in professional cycling uncategorized for the smaller hills, category four for the next, and progressively harder until you get to HC, the official French term for really steep hills, hors category, or beyond categorization. In plain layman's terms, very long or insanely steep, and often probably both. So if we select number four from the list, you get the screen showing the climb in green, along with a small elevation map at the top. And from where you are, if you click on ride, you'll get directions from where you are to the bottom of the climb. You can also scroll around the map if you wish, and all the climbs are marked with a small red mountain icon. And by dropping a pin on the particular climb, it will reveal itself and give you the option again to ride to the start of the climb. Basically, Garmin have added additional Climb Pro maps as an overlay over the cycling map that's already on there. And when you think of how many hills, large and small they are in the world, 
This database is staggeringly and impressively huge. When free riding without a loaded course, the map has all of these climbs revealing themselves when you get close to them. And they'll show as a color line depending on the category of the climb. The colors are the same as the colors used on the elevation graphs of climbs on your unit where it picks out the variances in the gradient. With green being the easiest through yellow, orange, red and dark red for the hardest climbs of all. I'm on an uncategorized climb here showing in green. Dingle Lane. The climbs show up based on a prediction of where you're likely to be going. So if you're turning off a climb before it's finished, here's what happens. So it will give you the climb completed statistics for the part of the climb that you actually did. Sometimes it will show climbs that you don't then go on and do, like here. So it's constantly scanning and recalculating where you might go next. Here you can see the number three at the start of this climb and it's in yellow. So it easily identifies it as a tougher category rating than the green one I showed you earlier. Yellow for category three. As I cycle further along, you can see on the right hand side a small uncategorized climb in green. But if you look closely, You'll see as soon as I make the choice not to do that climb and cycle past, it actually disappears off the map and I, as I continue my way on the third category climb. Climb Pro can also perform something called climb branching. It's not always going to get its predictions right regarding where it thinks you're going to cycle, as you saw earlier. And there may be scenarios where you're partway up a climb and have alternative climbs branching off in different directions. In this case, your head unit will show the elevation graph of the climb it thinks you're gonna take, probably by using the popularity map data. But if you branch off on a different one, it'll immediately change and show you the remaining elevation of the climb that you've just joined. And very cleverly, when you look at the data after the ride, you'll see a single elevation graph which is a combination of all the sections you actually cycled up, whether they were on different climbs or not. Depending on your cycling ability and strength, Climb Pro might be used in different ways. For you strong pedal pushers and mountain goats, for example, you might not want stuff popping up on your map, which you wouldn't even consider as a hill. So in the Climb Pro settings, you can control this. You just go to Activity Profiles, Choose which one you're using, tap on climbs, and in climb detection, you can see the choices there. The hills revealed or hidden, depending on what you choose, are based on the calculation mentioned earlier of average gradient multiplied by distance in meters, as shown here. Of course, for us mere mortals, you might be free riding in an area that you're not familiar with and wanting an easy low effort spin. Having climbs of whatever colour popping up on your map is also a useful early warning system to go the other way. Many of you enjoy a post ride sift through your ride data over coffee. And with Free Ride Climb Pro, you've got additional stats and graph goodness to dive into. Here on the Garmin Connect app on my phone, there's the elevation graph and tons of information about time, power and heart rate, etc. on this climb in Yorkshire that I almost died on. <sighs> oh God. Same again on the laptop, the climbs on the map are highlighted by mountain icons here 
and if I click on the same one, you get the data and the graph. That middle section there completely beat me up, to be honest. It's important to note that at the moment, Freeride Climb Pro is only available on the newest Edge 40 series. So the 540, 840 and the 1040. Even though the Tethered to Root Climb Pro is on the 30 series as well. I think it's a massive hit, if not before time, as competition to Garmin have had something similar for a while. I have several more Garmin gadget reviews on the channel, here's a couple, and click on the yellow icon here to see my other videos on future ones, happy cycling, and I'll see you soon.